What's up, nerds? Welcome to the Feature Match area here for round number two of GP Lil. The format is standard. Adrian Bauman and Reinhold Kohl here. Gonna go at it hammer and tong, Simon. Europeans finest oot and a boot today. And let's see what we're up with here. Looks like Reinhold Kohl's gonna kick things off with a Siren Storm Tamer. We got Mono Blue Aggro back on the menu, Simon. I love it. Uh, this deck is just something so off the wall mm -hmm. and, and somehow uh, when you play against it, this and the curious obsession comes down, and you just can't deal with the creature. Um, you, you feel so helpless, despite the cards being actually not tier one constructed uh, cards. The other, the other thing about this deck is we see a Shiv and Fire get rid of that storm, storm Tame. A lot of respect there from Bauman. Uh, and another thing about this deck is basically no new cards in it since rotation. It, it, I mean, it lost. To, it obviously lost the mighty Slitherblade. Rest in peace. Rest in pepperoni, my good friend. But. Uh, uh, you know, it's been, it's been, we've got new one power unblockable creatures to replace it with, but basically no guild cards. No. Um, just a quick update here. Reinhold actually kept a one mana creature, the Siren, a uh, curious obsession, and no second land, so he had to find it here with opt scrying to the bottom. Search for Azkata here for Bauman, who again, as we said, is playing Is It Control? Very, very keen to see exactly what this deck is capable of. Sorry, that of which this deck is capable. Very clumsy sentence there from me. I do apologize. And now Cole, having hit his second land drop, let's see what we can do with it. No no second two or one drop for him here. Is he shipping? This, yeah. is, a bad, this is bad news. His, his hand was relying on that uh, Storm Tamer surviving and getting suited up right away. We may see a uh, little 2-2 two -two flashy boy coming in there. Yep, yep. We can see the old merfolk sitting in hand and Cole's going to deploy it here and for, you know, basically no value. Mm -hmm. And if Bauman is on top of his game, just like he was with the Shivan Fire, he's going to deal with that right away. So to not give Reinhold the ability to, to protect it with his instance. Looks like Bauman's going to do exactly that. Shock takes care of the Merfolk Trickster, and it's back to Cole now. Whiteboarded card off the top. What could that be? Island. Ugh. Already. Already, Simon. I've been at work for about 10 minutes, and already I'm having a bad day. I do like the art, though. That's pretty good, actually. Looks like a real... Oh, man, I'd love to hang out on that island. Mm -hmm. And at least it's an actual island, right? Robinson Crusoe. Crusoe yeah, style. yeah, man. That's some real treasure island stuff there. Let's see what Cole's up to for turn number three here. Yeah, islands these days. They're, they're not even islands anymore. No, 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 no. There was that great analysis of it. <laughs> oh, wow. Here's... Wow. Okay. That's an aggressive main deck inclusion. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is often something we see coming out of the board of... Uh, um, uh, Blue control, blue blaze con mm -hmm. control decks to tussle against other control decks, but Mystic, Arch Mystic Archaeologist in the main deck here for Reinhold Cole. I mean, hey, it attacks and blocks, gets in for two, and occasionally will draw you a couple of cards, so I don't you mean, it. You mean we occasionally see this in the sideboard of decks that actually get to five mana? Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Although Reinhold is doing quite well for his one mana uh, starting hand. He's peeled, he's peeled some islands. Put together a little archipelago here. For those of you who haven't uh, seen the excellent analysis of the Evolution of Island Art. Uh, I think you can find on Reddit, on the Magic TCG Reddit, uh, you'll find someone, I can't remember their name, I do apologize that I can't give them proper credit for this, but you'll be able to find an, an analysis of the way that Island Art has evolved over the years of Magic. And, and my favorite one being the one that is just a hole in the sea. The opposite of an island, as they put it. Mystic Archaeologist, of course, has a curious obsession. Draws Cole a card. And now Charter Course, drawing more cards. So Cole... A slower start, but still uh, really getting amongst it here, Simon. Yes, and now we have a crucial turn here because he has one mana open to potentially protect his arche archaeologist. I believe if he gets to untap, uh, maybe drop that land number five, he's in really good shape uh, despite is it drawing some extra cards here. But if, if Bauman can just deal with the archaeolog archaeologist, even just investing two cards, uh, he should be really well set up uh, this game. It all hinges on the arche archaeologist. Chemist's insight here for Bauman. Sort of the glimmer, the, the poor man's glimmer of genius. Been doing work in standard since uh, the powerful draw spell rotated. We'll see what Bauman's up to next now. S uh, resolves his search for as Kanta trigger. And here is Sark and Fireblood. Again, as we mentioned, Bauman is playing. Niv Mizzet Parun, four copies thereof. So a little bit of a, a wombo combo there. But let's see what he's going to do with uh, the Fireblood here. Bauman had to uh, be a bit scared of Spellpierce right there. Yeah. 
Planeswalker is actually pretty good against the, the Curious Obsession decks. Uh, not always easy for, for Mono Blue to decide how to deal with a Planeswalker, and, and often you only have that one creature to, to really get through with. Cole's in a tricky spot here because if he wants to uh, draw cards with his Curious Obsession, he has to go after uh, the... Uh, he has to go to the face of, mm -hmm. of Bauman, of course. But that means that Sarkin's going to remain uncontested as we see Bauman play a Field of Ruin. He did have that shame land for the uh, the Spell Pierce, but uh, uh, luckily didn't have to uh, concede to it. Maybe he... Well, no, he actually had one in hand because yeah. he discarded yeah, the Steam Lands. Yeah. Um, given that the three-power archaeologist can't deal with the Sarkin in one hit, I actually expect uh, Reinhold to attack uh, Bauman here. And maybe look for a way to deal with the Sarkin in, in one fell swoop. Well, let's see here. Yep, Cole goes upstairs. Bauman down to 14. Cole draws another card. Got a nice full grip. Things have come together well for him after a shaky keep. Bit of a loosey-goosey start there for Cole, but he's done well to dig himself out of it. Somehow Bauman didn't have any more responses. I was actually very surprised when the Curious Obsession just resolved and, and uh, Cole mm -hmm. was allowed to attack. Yeah, given that Bauman was very keen to leverage that removal. But unable to do something right now in the face of this archaeologist. And now Tempest Gin as well. How about this? 5-4 Flyer for 3. Not a bad deal. You can see that uh, Reinhold actually values the Tempest Gin more than uh, keeping open the, the Mystic Archaeologist yeah. activation. So, yeah. so I think that kind of shows that the activation is not really what you need in, in a game one. Not very high on the radar, no, for Cole, especially as he's drawing cards, extra cards every turn. Sarkin's going to go upstairs, discard another Steam Vents here. Great to see the old uh, return to Ravnica Steam Vents uh, getting amongst it again. I, I, I held on to all of them, obviously. Obviously, they're playable and modern, so obviously I was going to hold on to them for a good while, but it's nice to be able to, get, to dust them off for standard, you know? You've probably got the original Ravnica I, Yeah, I, I was yeah. very surprised when you called that one old, because I mean, it, in my mind, that's still... Relatively new. Relatively new for you, yeah. Nah, man. Return of Ravnica was uh, where it all kicked off for me. So the first, first set I really drafted properly, as we see now that another chemist is inside. And interesting to see that last turn Bauman kept up uh, a blue and blue and one, but didn't have something like an essence scatter there for that Tempest Gin. Didn't have anything. He, he hasn't really been doing no. Uh, much, no. no, no, no. For a control deck, I'm, uh, I'm a bit concerned here. Maybe just expansion, explosion, if Mizzet's in hand, uh, additional planeswalkers that are not great uh, against but such I mean, a board. If there's Niv Mizzet, just play it, right? Oh, yeah. Against Mono Blue. You yeah, just play it. Just slam it. Step one, slam. Step two, jam. Get it done. But no, Bauman. Niv Mizzet is actually a very scary card, uh, also for the Mono Blue deck, because it's just almost impossible to deal with. Yeah, of course. I mean, what, what are they going to do to you know, bounce it back to their hand? Okay, all right, cast it again. Don't worry about it. So in comes the team once again. Bauman takes a lick, and let's see if he can keep on ticking here because this is uh, a lot of pressure, very... Uh, well, it's really putting the uh, put him on a clock here. And here's a Shivan Fire. Damage has kind of already been done with the Archaeologist, though. Drawn two cards of it. Oh, and a dive down as well. And I believe everything is going uh, to the face here. No need to to waste six points of damage on a Sarkhan when, when your opponent is that low on life. You would rather give them one more activation of the Planeswalker, but threaten lethal. So Bauman down to five. Cole replaces that dive down with the trigger from the Curious Obsession here. And Bauman, in a world of hurt, as we see Mist Cloaked Herald, the alpha build of Slitherblade. Yeah, that actually doesn't really affect the board too much. Doesn't change the clock. Tempest Gen is still lethal. The remaining creatures are not. Mountain hits the bin thanks to the search for Azkanter. The expedition is successful and we find finally the sunken ruin. Bauman draws. Needs something special here. Needs something special. There aren't a lot of sweepers in these colours. Something like a River's Rebuke might buy him some time here. Does get another Stab at it here, or is this going to be Niv Mizzet? No, we're going to see uh, another Steam Vents discarded. That Sarkin has not impressed me this game. Nope. Nope, I agree. Pretty underwhelming card, generally speaking. Hasn't really found his home just yet. He's an opt now. There's an old card. Yep. Invasion. Invasion? Yes! Grandpa Simon, I finally got something right. So, Bauman. 
continues to churn through his deck. As you oh, you, you call it, Simon. He's got a, an expansion explosion in hand. It's not going to help him too much here, however. He needs to deal with all of these threats, or at least the, the uh, Mystic Archaeologist and the, uh, the Tempest Chin. Well, and he's probably facing at least one hard counter from, from the Mono Blue deck at yeah. this point. Yep, Cole's drawn a, a thousand million cards, so he's obviously got some interaction. You see expansion explosion on your screen there, ladies and gentlemen. We do apologize to those of you who will be... You better, better limber up those, uh, those cervical vertebrae this weekend, because you're, you're going to be doing a fair few tilts of the old head. That's a card that you should have on your, on your radar. Uh, not only the explosion side, but also expansion. Can be, can be quite surprisingly powerful. So Bauman, well and truly in the tank. Ships it back to Cole, who only has to really send these uh, send in the team. What has he got? To, what has he got to be afraid of here? Not much. Uh, I would like. I would like to see another curious obsession on the one one. Oh, just, just like this. Just like that. Just like because, that. Because now his uh, remaining team, apart from the Tempest Chain, is also threatening Lethal, and I think then a Bauman will just be out of outs. Yeah. Well, his two mana. And a negate, targeting the curious obsession. Sure. So Cole, a little, a little preemptive there in putting that uh, aura on his creature. That thing takes care of business. Back to Cole now. Let's see what he's up to. Gets in with the team, of course. Big attack here. The Jin alone is lethal. And a lightning strike on the four toughness creature. But copying it with expansion here as well. But Cole, boo, boo. He's got the answer, and that means Bauman's going to scoop him up. That is that. Game number one goes to Reinhold Cole playing a Blasty Blast from the Pasty Past here in Mono Blue Tempo. The Ken Yuka Heroes special, of course. We saw him play it at World Simon, and it's still getting it done in standard at GP Lil. So have a, have, let's have a, a quick squiz at what these blokes are up to when it comes to sideboarding. Even just without knowing, you know, 100% of the list, Simon, is this what we expect from this matchup? Is, is, the, is the mono blue deck sort of, you know, heavily disfavored or heavily favored, or how does it look? I would have expected the uh, Is It Control deck to put up much more of a fight. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not sure if the, if the dragon version that uh, Bauman brought to the, to the tables is uh, all that great because relying on planeswalkers is dangerous okay niv mizzet is great but it's also expensive uh, what are those field of ruins doing there uh, they're not casting niv mizzet i i'm not too too convinced yet of of that uh, particular version okay well to give bauman a, a little bit of breathing room here he only plays two copies he did draw both of them but there is also an arch of Arazga here but i tell you what there are some there's some real spice in adrian bauman's list two copies of star of extinction Ah, that's the Carnage Tyrant... Uh, the Carnage Tyrant Killer. Flavor win. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, re it really gets it done against Car Carnage Tyrant in more ways than one. But on top of that, pretty uh, pretty standard stuff that you'd expect. Well, of course, going to be standard stuff. Not going to be modern stuff. It's not going to be legacy stuff, is it, Simon? Let's be serious. Uh, Lava Coil, Lightning Strike, Sinister Sabotage, Shock, Shiv and Fire Opt, all sorts of stuff like that. Pretty uh, pretty bog standard. Uh, is it Control Deck, apart from uh, those the, the, that little bit of spice there? What kind of, what kind of mass removal does uh, Bauman have in the sideboard? In the sideboard, we're looking at a couple of copies, or three copies, I should say, of Fiery Cannonade. And that's just about it. And that's just two damage to each non-pirate. Non -pirate, yep. Which and doesn't kill Star and Siren Storm Tamer. And that can be huge. Yeah. It, it, it uh, already doesn't kill uh, cards like Tempest Gin or mm -hmm. something that has been uh, pushed with a Curious Obsession, mm -hmm. pumped with a Curious Obsession. And then if you also can't take uh, out the Siren, the card is actually not that great. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... I mean... It's, I mean, we're pretty thin on the ground when it comes to sweepers uh, generally in standard these days. The sweepers are kind of big, expensive, or clunky, or, or, con or highly conditional. Uh, I'm, so, I'm sure Fire Cannonade will do some work this weekend, but uh, yeah, here it may not be the best option. Essence Scatter, though, seems pretty good. Not a whole lot of other options. I mean, Murmuring Mystic maybe start to uh, just... just uh, gum up the ground and, and the air with some blockers. Yeah, if, if that's your plan against Mono Blue, I, I really don't love it. I'm going to be honest. Also, something like Star of Extinction, you cannot tap out uh, to cast a 7-mana sorcery against Mono Blue. That's just uh, running into all those spell pierces and other uh, counter magic. Well, what's going on here for, for Reinhold Cole? Has he got some ways to, to counter this, uh, this Is It Control deck? 
Oh uh, yes, uh, I think uh, disdainful stroke is a is a nice card to add. I would definitely put in more dive downs. Uh, you can shave few uh, few of the essence scatters. Mm -hmm. Not uh, I don't think if I don't know if there are any targets in the main deck. No, there are not the main deck. There's um, not. Reinhold was actually holding two of them. At I the guess end you of could ta you can target Niv Mizzet. Okay, technically, Th technically, technically correct. speaking, yes. Um, no, but honestly. He doesn't need much. No. His main deck is, is very very well set up for this matchup. Yeah, and it doesn't look like Adrian Bauman has uh, has packed the heat that he needs for this particular matchup. So I, I guess when Bauman was sitting down to put together a sideboard, I, I don't know how high Mono Blue Tempo was mm -hmm. on his list of decks to beat. I would say not higher than number six or seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. is that the line? I think I think after after you've listed like six decks in standard. You can start thinking about Monoblue. Yeah, I, I, th I was going to take the under there, for sure. I mean, the, uh, sorry, the over, as in, like, I, it, I, I think yeah, it would yeah, be yeah. lower down. I, I get it, yeah. but, but try it, because you, you're actually not finding that many decks. Okay, Mono Red. Sure. Boros. Uh, no, Boros definitely different, like the Angels deck, okay, right? Okay, okay. Golgari. Okay. Uh, Jeskai. Four. Uh, Blue, Black, Teferi. That's a different deck. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, no Googling. I'm not Googling. I've just got to check something else that is unrelated to this very quickly. Hang on one second. See? Mono Blue is I'm looking six. at something else. I've just got to read this thing. on. I've got to check my Snapchat. Don't, don't worry about it. Okay. Ah, oh, well, of course, Selesnia. I just remembered. There's White Weenie. Uh, Grix Control. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you, if, you, if you count each variation of, uh, of Control uh, separately. Yeah? Yeah, exactly. Which all need the same sideboard cards. Azorius Control. Is it Control? And then, finally, we get to Mono Blue Tempo. See? Easy game. I was right. I got it again. Another win. Another win for the good guys. Chalk it up. Oh, but uh, seriously, what, what we have to look for is Bauman actually has to start exactly like he started uh, in game one. Removal, search for Iskanta, another removal spell. But then I would like to see him ramp into, into Nif mizzet to mm -hmm. really get the payoff of these eight slots. If you're playing for Sarkin and for Nif mizzet uh, you have to slam it on turn four a couple of times, otherwise it's just not worth the, the slots. I mean, this is the thing, right? It's, it's, it's a very powerful, very potent uh, way for your deck to sort of pull ahead, but if it doesn't happen, I mean, niv is it's not a bad card, but it's very expensive. Sarkin, on the other hand, I think is a bad card. It's, it's looks, it looks to me like it's kind of like a sh shoot for the moon mm. strategy. Yeah. Uh, high variance, like <laughs> high risk, high reward. And they say, you know, oh, you know, shoot for the moon because even if you miss, you'll end up amongst the stars. And that is actually a remarkably bad piece of advice because the nearest star to Earth is still, I mean, how many light years away? Mm, much much more than the moon. A lot more than the moon. Yeah. I, guess, I guess you could technically hit the sun, which is a star, obviously. But then the thing is, okay, two problems there. First of all, we're shooting for the moon. So, you know, if, if you're shooting for the moon and the sun is out, you're going to have a hard time aiming because the sun is obviously going to wash the moon out. Second thing, if you hit the sun... You're in a lot more trouble than if you hit the moon. You're in a lot more trouble. It's like 9,000 degrees on the surface of the sun or something ridiculous. Might even be over 9,000. I don't know. In any case, look, can I just, let's just roll back the advice altogether. Don't even shoot for the moon. Not but unless you're fully equipped with, with, you know, some kind of rocket and, and, and life support device that is going to help you survive on, you know, in a lunar environment. Just don't play Sarkin. Don't play Sark and Fireblood is what we're trying to say. That's, that's the bottom line here. As Bauman takes a mulligan, we're going to scry as well. See what he's up to. Leaves it on top and we're off to the races now. Back to Cole. One drop for him as well. I think has every single one of his islands mismatched. It probably. He's just on the mono tilt plan today as we see Mist Cloaked Herald. And an opt now for Bauman. Bauman is, is playing a lot of early removal. Lava Coil, Lightning Stroke, Shock, and Shiv and Fire. So what I think he has to do here, Simon, is leverage that early removal and prevent Cole from getting traction. You know, hitting with a Curious Obsession. But, but how do you do that when you start with a tapped land intentionally, then you tap out for opt and play another tapped land? You're going to lose the tempo game 100% of the, of the games. Well, he hasn't been punished here by Cole, who gets in with the... Uh, Little merfolk fellow here. And a, and a charter course now to draw two cards. Finds Tempest Gin, and I think that's a Jace Cunning Castaway there. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so uh, looks like Cole has a garbage three-drop Planeswalker of his own. Here's a mountain. And you, you can see that uh, Cole actually values the card draw of charter course over um, deploying more creatures, mm -hmm. which is something that an aggro deck would never do. 
But this mono blue deck plays a very different game where it wants to make sure that one threat sta stays on the battlefield, but you're not too concerned about having two or three creatures attack. No, it, flooding the board are much less of a priority here as Cole gets in again, just for one now. No blocks to be had. Bauman, no responses. Takes one down to 18. Cole, Siren, Storm Tamer in hand. Chase as well, but he's got to respect the counter magic of uh, Adrian Bauman, who is very suspiciously leaving up one blue blue. Oh, that's an aggressive, aggressive counter there. I guess Bauman realizes that his, uh, his fiery cannonades can't kill it. So he's going to make hay while the sun is, well, not shining, but maybe poking out through the clouds just a little bit. So Bauman tapped out. And Cole, thinking about his next move, he can, he can sort of act with impunity here. He's going to ship. Okay. Oh, that's surprising. Is Bauman troubling, uh, struggling for lands here? But, but yeah. Reinhold yeah. Was, holding, yeah. was holding a Mystic Archaeologist. True, there is the threat of the cannonade, but that was very defensive. So it gets in again now with the miscloaked Herald. Bauman failing to find his fourth land, and Cole's going to ship again. He's got Dive Down in hand, and here is a Lightning Strike on the uh, miscloaked Herald. That's fine, and, and Reinhold is actually in a very nice position here because he's holding uh, counter magic, but mm. also a Merfolk Trickster. So he yep. knows that he can deal with something threatening, but also uh, deploy a threat. Now, Bauman's found a, uh, not found a nice one here too in uh, the form of Chemist's Insight. That's the sort of card he needs to continue to pull ahead. But I think Cole is just, as, as, we, as we mentioned, Simon, he's getting uh, a little bit of traction here now that he's been able to deploy the, this instant speed th threat. Start to chuck some punches about with a 2-2. Uh, you, you have the list in front of you. Bauman is not playing Crackling Drakes, right? Hmm? Bauman is not playing any Crackling Drakes. No, no, no. No so copies of Crackling Drake. I, I'm wondering whether that would just make his deck um, so much better in this matchup. Yes, but oh, if only there were four very bad cards that he could cut from the main deck in order to put an actual good one in, Simon. Yeah, I can't I can't. I see can't think one. of any cards that he could cut. If only there were a play set of, 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 of bad... You know, questionable mythics that he could get rid of. Here's a wizard's response to take care of that chemist's insight. I like that. I like that. I like that it only costs two. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Reinhold is actually holding a, another one, potentially going for the double counter here. And we are entering uh, Nifmizid territory. So the mana this time looks perfect for Bauman. It doesn't matter whether he drops an island or a mountain, uh, he would have mana for Nifmizid here. In comes the Merfolk Trickster once again, cracking in for two. By the way, Expansion Explosion really not at its best in this matchup. No. And Tempest Gin as well. Cole keeping up two mana at all times here, Simon. Of course, he's playing plenty of counter magic himself, and even Negate coming in out of the board for Cole if he so chooses. Dive down in hand. Another wizard's response, I think, at the back of his hand too. So he's got the answers, but uh, Niv Mizzet, obviously, great against opposing counter magic. Let's see what Bauman's up to now. Looks like he's going to deploy a fiery cannonade just to get rid of this Merfolk Trickster by the look of things. He may have, an, he may have another burn spell to finish off the Tempest Gen. Uh, this is kind of nice because now if, if Cole, for example, tries to protect his Trickster with a dive down, then Bauman could try to uh, expansion his Fiery Cannonade. But he can't go for the expansion on Fiery Cannonade play um, when, when uh, Cole still has two mana open. That doesn't... Oh, he has the Nidiv Mizzet, but he doesn't have land number six. So an opt now sends a card below deck for Bauman. That would have been the, the first thing that would have really gone well mm. for, for Bauman here. Just slam Big Dragon into play. It's been winni winning games of Magic since 1993. But instead, Sark and Fireblood. So Bauman might get the chance to uh, shape his hand a little bit, maybe discard that Expansion Explosion. What's the play here? Pal Bauman. Goes upstairs, naturally. And just ships. I don't like that. Well, if your hand is perfect, 
but, but the expansion explosion is not a good card in this situation, I don't think. No, it, it was never really great here. You, you can only try to win counter battles with it, but you're always risking to get blown out by uh, Cole having that one more response. Like, just dig further. You might find, I don't know, a rel relevant interaction. Or just a land. Or just a land, exactly. I mean, the Sarkin is going to enable the niv Mizzet next turn regardless, but all the same, yeah. If, if we assume that Cole just uh, leaves it alive, like he has the, the last couple of times, he doesn't have to. He can just kill no, it. No, he just blast it. In, in which case, it's even more important. No, he's going to go upstairs. Okay. All right. No, well, that, Re Reinhold Cole plays one way. One way only. Yeah, doesn't even see the option on the menu to, to attack a planeswalker. And a mystic archaeologist to follow up here for Cole. Back to Bauman. We could see Niv Mizzet Parun come down this turn. With the mana ability of Sark and Fireblood. I think Bauman found an opt for this turn. Upstairs with mana, two mana. And here he is. The guild master of the Izzet League. Niv Mizzet Parun, get it done. Can't be counted, of course. So a safe play in the face of opposing counter magic. Oh no, Rain Hot Cole, don't do it. A wizard's retort is going to do stone cold. Nothing here. But Cole looks to be committing to the play. He didn't read the card. Oh no, ladies and gentlemen, it's a disaster. The world is coming to an end. And Adrian Bauman points to a very relevant line of text on this card. Reinhold Cole. Oh, my friend. Having done, after having done so much work, Cole is hoist by his own petard. I think he's going for the takesies backsies here. No way. That is not going to work out well for him, Simon. It's not an illegal play. You can target Absolutely. an uncounterable spell with a counter spell. It just doesn't do anything. That's, al that's always important when, it's, when this happens to you. You have to say, okay, that resolves. Yeah, then yeah. Everything is fine, you know? Because in this situation, Cold, I think he just, I think he untapped, I think he, that mana to the bottom of the screen yeah. there, he untapped. These two islands are tapped and yeah. they shouldn't ever have been untapped. Yeah. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to have to get a judge involved here to sort this situation out because, as you say, Simon, you can, you can just say, yeah, sure, your counterspell resolves, and it does a nothing. It does a nothing. So Cole here, checking in with the judge as to uh, exactly how it works. Of course, those two islands should be tapped. I think, I think he, yes, because the, the top two islands were tapped to use the, the Mystic Archaeologist. So, yeah, there we go. We're going to get that sorted out. And a devastating turn of events here for Reinhold Cole as Niv Mizzet does an imp impersonation of Nickel Bolas, having him discard a card when he comes into play. But that explains to me why he didn't even consider uh, killing the Sarkhan because he thought he had the, ah, he yeah. was safe from Niv Mizzet. Yep. yep. But he wasn't. No, he thought he had the answer for it. So. Uh, and it was so weird too. He was he was reading his own counter spell, and and countering it very slowly, and somehow still did it. Yeah, he really, he really thought about it. He, re he was like, okay, well, I don't think anything could go wrong for me here. And by the way, this opt is, was the perfect draw for Bowman as yeah, well. Yeah, nice one as well here, because of course we're going to gonna start popping off with ridiculous Niv-Mizzet triggers, but of course a dive down here for Colton. No, 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 no. Trigger. Niv-Mizzet triggers. You draw again. But it's got, it's got plus 0, plus 3. No, you, you draw from the, from the dive phone being cast. What is going on? We, we, what? Oh, right, of course. No, Bauman made a mistake. Oh, no. Oh, no. So Cole, in a desperate attempt to save face, opens his mouth to change feet, and Bauman's just like, sure, buddy. That's all right. Enjoy your lunch. He gets to keep around that mystic archaeologist for nothing. Oh, hang on. No. Oh now! We, oh no! It's just one of these, look at this. It's just a. It's just a big. It's a just a big food fight down at the feature match area here at GP, little ladies and gentlemen. That's not how magic works. <laughs> this is not how the, That's not how magic <laughs> works. Not you. <laughs> oh dear. Well. Anyway, you slice it. We've ended up with the, the archaeologist kicking around still. Nib Mizzet Perun, ready to rumble. Triggers flying around like it's a machine gun assembly factory. And both of these fellows doing their very best to get it done here. And Cole is one point of lethal with Merfolk Trickster. Unbelievable. 
The drama, Simon. Yeah. The drama. My, my heart. Of Saturday morning at a GP, my goodness. So Cole, thinking long and hard about what he wants to do, he's going to uh, he's going to get in with the Tempest Gin here. Coming across as a 5-4 flyer. No blocks from Bauman, of course. Could have potentially done something about that attacker, but happy to just let it go. Uh, Bauman, of course, wants to keep that Nif Mizet on the battlefield for as long as possible. Only block with it when... Uh, when in absolute dire straits. Yeah. Yeah. Last possible moment. So, Cole... Spell Pierce in hand for him. It looks like another Merfolk Trickster, as you said. And uh, still that Jace Cunning cast away. Maybe, maybe a potential line here is to Merfolk Trickster the Nif Mizzet in Bauman's upkeep. Mm -hmm. That way it gets tapped. Uh, Bauman doesn't get to shoot from his draw step, doesn't get to shoot from the Sarkhan activation, and needs... Um, well, to, to have a bunch of instants in Reinhold's turn to actually do something uh, productive. Jay's cutting cast away the play here for Cole. Going to make a 2-2, two -two, perhaps. Yeah. A little 2-2 two -two illusion token made here. And, oh. Oh, I was going to say, even has the token himself. Does not. So, Cole, Trickster in hand, and just do a spell pierce. And we may see that line that you mentioned, Simon. Or not. Or not. So, the archaeologist dies. Bauman can also remove that 2-2 from play as well, thanks to the sacrifice trigger that it has. Discards a mountain to the Sarkin. He loves discarding lands. As a control deck, he just loves discarding lands. One damage to the Tempest Gin here. Bauman has got a shock and an expansion explosion in hand here. So Bauman is just going to deal with the whole board, I assume. So a shock on the uh, Tempest Gin there is going to generate another trigger here from the Niv Mizzet. And do one final point of damage there to the Tempest Gin, which is going to, of course, clean it up. Four damage total. Two from the shock and two from the different triggers from Niv Mizzet. So Adrian Bauman gets out the mop and bucket and starts taking Cole to the cleaners. And now we see the power of Niv Mizzet as, as an engine. But Merfolk Trickster is here to have something to say about that. And what, what can Bauman do? He does ba have Bauman didn't cast his expansion explosion. He, he waited with it. Maybe didn't want to play into a counter spell, but now... Because he didn't deal with the illusion, he's once again facing lethal. Well, he, he, we're going to see explosion here. Yeah, he's, he's forced to do that, of yeah. course. So explosion for two, targeting the Merfolk Trickster, mm -hmm. drawing a card, of course, and one damage going at the illusion here. Uh, which it has will to be, unless Bauman doesn't know that it dies from, from being targeted. Well, it, is it is written on the card, but in this game we have seen that that isn't really a relevant factor. So the Merfolk Trickster has resolved. Trigger with the, its trigger on the stack, we'll see two damage pointed at it. A trigger from Niv Mizzet, targeting the illusion, which will, of course, kill it straight away. Even though it's two-two, because it gets sacrificed as soon as it's targeted by anything. So this should clean up the board here. And Bauman gets two more cards, and draw two more cards with the uh, expansion explosion. So. Finally, Niv, Niv, Niv Mizzet tapped, and we move on with the game back to Cole now. With uh, Bauman tapped out, Cole's got an opportunity to start to put something on the board. Spell Pierce in hand for him. He's got a Jace Cunning Castaway. He's not going to do too much this turn, of course. These dueling three mana planeswalkers really showing their, really strutting their stuff in the feature match area, Simon, showing us just exactly how powerful they are. One damage upstairs with Niv Mizzet. You can see Bauman there going through the motions. Obviously, well-practiced at having a Niv-Mizzet in play. 
And finally, the 5-5 is going to get busy here. Take out this chase. Could have actually um, tried to take it out with the triggers first and then uh, dealt 5 to Cole here. So uh, instead, we see 2 for Cole and 5 for Jace. I guess Bauman just really wanted to send a very clear message. At this point, it doesn't really matter, but uh, let's not sugarcoat it. This game has been full of uh, very questionable things happening. I, I was wondering how diplomatic you were going to be there because that run-up seemed like you were really going to yeah, let rip, but then I, you, I, I stopped myself. you kind of pulled in the reins there a little bit, Simon, before uh, the stallion could really start bucking across the field. It wasn't even so much about magic. It was just about what do these cards do, mm. right? It, it mm. was uh, on a level that we're not really used to seeing. Niv Mizzet comes in across for five now. Cole uh, doesn't have too much to say about it, I, I don't think. Sark and Fireblood is... Looks like, uh, looks like we're going to see a Sarkin emblem here. Or a Sarkin ultimate, I should say. What a card. Which is not something I've seen. Create four five five dragons here. And Cole is uh, taking an absolute pasting here. A draconic beatdown, I have to say, from uh, Adrian Bauman. I really like how our uh, colleagues in the, in the feature match area are getting, getting put to the test. Here. Yeah, yeah. Have you got the 5-5 five, five Sarkin Dragon token? Have you got the 2-2 two, two Jace token here? And Cole can't believe it. A, a rueful shake of the head. How did that one get away from me, he asks. You want the answer? It had to do with Wizards res Retort. Well, we'll see how these guys want to go uh, post-game two now. Anything they can perhaps tighten up with their decks. Of course, we saw the power of Niv-Mizzet once it comes down. It's a big ask at six mana, especially against an aggressive deck like this Mono Blue Tempo list. But Bauman did well to leverage the power of the Dragon. We'll see if he can do the same thing in game number three. Although, I guess, I guess one of the things to, that's important to note here is that Cole's start was a lot slower. He didn't have the Curious Obsession. He was able to get in twice with the... Uh, with the miscloaked Herald early, but still didn't capitalize on the advantage of having an early evasive creature with something like a Curious Obsession. He just needs to deal with Niv Mizzet. Yeah. Either he wins before it so that he has an insurmountable board, or he deals with it some other way. But countering is not going to work. An interesting card that we, we might have to talk about here, Simon, in the sideboard of Reinhold Cole is Metamorphic Alteration. Two mana aura that... It's, it's a weird clone variant. It turns a creature into a copy of another creature that's on the battlefield. So, for example, if Reinhold Cole had an enormous, you know, a, a powerful, a mighty beta like a miscloaked herald and wanted for whatever reason to downgrade that card in some way, he could perhaps turn it into something like a niv Yep. So, so the, it's, a, it's an interesting rare from, uh, from M19 in the sense that often when you have clone effects, you want to copy the strongest creature on the battlefield. So you will take your weakest creature and mm -hmm. upgrade it to the maximum, but as people have figured out in Limited actually is, you can just put it on an opponent's creature and uh, choose that to become the weakest creature on the battlefield. Yeah. So you can use it almost like a removal spell or like an upgrade. And uh, I could see this card being uh, very good in this matchup because of how important Nif Mizzet is. Uh, you can just downgrade Nif Mizzet to that Mist Clark Herald well, or the other way Here's around. my question. This is my question for you, Simon. Let's say you have a, a miscloaked herald, and they have a new visit. Which way do you go? Which way do you go? Do you you know is this is this is this is a sort of like uh, you know are you are you wanting to enter into a period of détente? You know is this or is this very much a sort of escalation? Let's uh, let's build up the stockpile and and, mm -hmm. and see just how high we can build this tower. What do you go? This is, uh, it's almost like a philosophical question. Yes, it is. Yeah. I I would go with um, denying my opponent the new visit. Because I just don't want them to have that much fun. All right, Mikhail Gorbachev. You're a big fan of all the, of all, a bit of, bit of perestroika you want to bring to the magic table, huh? Yeah. Just, just uh, tur turn, your, turn your blue, 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 red, red, red dragon into, into, a, into a common yeah. merfolk, krieger, whatever it is. And then, they, and then they're just going to pass like ships in the night, just poking in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I like that. Yep. The Simon Gertzen disarmament policy. Also, the is it controlling? I don't think can do so much with the unblockability clause. You're not gonna mm. suffer too much from that. I think. Okay. I mean, silliness aside, let's think about this. Adrian Bauman has Niv Mizzet in his deck because he's confident that he can make the most of that card, right? Whereas, uh, you know, in this shell. 
Whereas Reinhard Cole is playing Miscloaked Herald in his deck because he's confident that he can make the most of that card in his list, right? Niv Mizzet is a very powerful card in the abstract, but if your entire deck is built around maximizing the power of a one mana, one one unblockable, and if your opponent's deck is built around maximizing the power of a, of a, of a six mana five five, you want to not give them what they want, yep. I think is the answer here. And also, you if you if you imagine you are playing the deck that's also weak to Niv Mizzet. Yeah. The Izzet control deck itself is not, it's not stone technically to weak no, to, to no, Niv-Mizzet. So exactly. all of these things combined uh, really make sense. Also, a Niv-Mizzet mirror is really exhausting. Yes. All these triggers. Yeah, the, the mental the mental <laughs> energy you spend on it is is, is not nothing. So Miss Cloaked Herald here, speak of the devil, and yay, he shall appear. And here is the 1-1 unblockable getting in 4-1. No curious obsession again for Cole. No. That's going to be a blow. But his end looks quite good, actually. Uh, I like the uh, one, two, three punch of Harold into Trickster into Tempest Jin. There's even some card draw in Reynolds' hand, and Bauman once again with that tap land, not doing much, no shocks. Oh, could not syncopate that fast enough. However, here Bauman keeping the pressure down. Okay, but that means Tempest Jin resolves. So Cole gets in for one. Let's see if he's got the mighty flyer here. Yes, indeed, Tempest Jin. And Bauman needs a lava coil here. Does he have it? Looks like he's got a, his third land. Maybe we'll see the mighty Sarkin Fireblood. I can tell you're, you're a really big fan. Oh, mate. There's nothing I love more than questionable three-drop Planeswalkers. Not even questionable. I don't think there's a single three-drop Planeswalker that I actually do like. Even Liliana the Veil and Liliana the Last Hope. They just annoy me. I've lost those cards so many times in Modern. I mean, I've lost a lot of cards in modern. It's not, it's not much of a distinction, Simon, but still. So, Cole gets busy in for five here. And Bauman does not have the Lava Coil, or if he did, chose not to leverage it. I'm sure that Bauman is planning to spend his mana, but if it's only reactive cards, only counter magic, and uh, Rhino doesn't have to deploy anything else to the board, then Bauman is just being starved here once again. This is almost a repeat uh, where where Bauman doesn't have the lands and control deck that doesn't uh, hit its land drops is just so easy to maneuver around. So, nothing doing here for Bauman. As you say, he's failed, failing to find those lands. Cole, Cole is the one on uh, on five lands here. Gets in again. Mm -hmm. It's and time for six. If Reinhold has another land, another island, uh, he is threatening lethal with just these two creatures. He doesn't have to play anything. Bauman might even be forced to discard. Finds no. the fourth land. Is that going to change things here for Bauman? He obviously doesn't have Lava Coil. He would have fired that off many moons ago, you would have thought. Maybe maybe now he can combine Fiery Cannonade and Shock. Not that that would work. I mean, but there are so many things that Cole could have that would that would stymie those plans, right? Yeah, but I mean, the game is basically over. You just have to hope that you can uh, you can survive somehow. Okay, that's gutsy. So, just dead, right? That's a one. Well, against an island, yes, or against a Merfolk trickster. Just yep, that's the way that it goes. Unfortunately for Adrian Bauman, Reinhold Cole has the goods and is able to punch through those final points of damage winning the game two game winning the match i should say two games to one well things are only going to heat up even further in our feature match area throughout the coverage of gp lil this weekend we've got to take a quick break on the other side of it however simon and i'll be back for some time walk magic which you're not going to want to miss we'll see you back here in france after this
Welcome back to the tournament floor here at GP Lil, ladies and gentlemen. Riley Knight joined by Simon Gertz and the Pro Tour champion, and we have Time Walk Magic lined up and ready to go. This is very much going to be the, the matchup of the weekend, is my prediction here. We've got Mono Red versus Golgari Midrange, although a little bit of a twist in the tail here uh, as Antoine Sanquin is playing a, a big red version here, all the way up to Siege Gang Commander. Wow, that's an interesting list mm -hmm. with the uh, uh, four treasure maps in, in his Mono Red deck. Yep, Dismissive Pyromancer, Goblin Chain Whirler at the lower end, Rekindling Phoenix, of course, Runaway Steamkin, let's not forget about that little fellow. But a Druid of the Cow now for Lino Burgold. Have a chat to us about what's going on in his list. Yeah, I would if I could read the deck list. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has Forest and Swamps. I, I think we're just looking at a, at a tuned Golgari list. Uh, Lino basically deciding that he wants to go with the tier one deck of the format. Yeah, and look, he doesn't look. He, he's busy. He doesn't have time. He's testing on Magic Online. He's, he's you know, he's, he's working on a perfect side. But he doesn't have time to neatly write out a deck list. It looks like it's a, it looks like it's been constructed with you know, sort of spaghetti. But all the same, he's got it done. He's registered 60, 75 cards. He's having a great time getting it done now with a Seeker's Squire. Finds an Overgrown Tomb and plays it immediately. Yeah, lots of um, lots of Planeswalkers in his deck. Uh, multiple Vraskas, and then, uh, of course, the removal package. One of the things that makes this deck so great is uh, with uh, Fine Finality, Vraska's Contempt, Essence Trophy, you really have most things under control. Uh, Vivian Reed as well, a uh, really nice answer to Crackling Drake. Yeah, she really does a lot. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of utility to be, to be gained from her removal effect, as we see now, a dismissive Pyromancer for Antoine saint -Croix. Uh Also playing Experimental Frenzy, Simon, which is only proven just how powerful it can be on the up and up, I would say, this card. Expecting to see a lot more of it throughout the weekend. Although this is certainly a weirder... You know, usually we see decks with Experimental Frenzy being a bit lower to the ground. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of like we're seeing Tier 1 against a, against a Rogue strategy uh, mm -hmm. that, that has to prove itself, right? These... These treasure maps and uh, pyromancers and experimental frenzies, they have to show that they deserve to be uh, at this stage, that they can tussle with Golgari midrange. Treasure Cove generates three treasures there. San Quan grabs the shovel out, does a bit of digging. He's got another treasure map as well, so the next expedition may already be underway here for him. Dismissive Pyromancer is a card that Got a, got a little bit of press when it was first announced, but uh, hasn't really seen a huge amount of play so far, Simon. Power, power level's certainly there. I agree. It's a, it's a really nice package. The fact that both activations cost mana mm. does make it a bit weaker for um, constructive play. Here we go. So, Experimental Frenzy. For those of you who haven't seen this card, well... I don't know what you've been doing, but it is a big player in standard right now. Of course, now uh, saint Quan's friend is... Oh, friend? His hand? I mean, his I don't know what his friend is doing, but his hand is more or less irrelevant at this stage because now he just plays off the top of his library. Look at the top card of his library whenever he wants, and uh, he can play them whenever he wants. Uh, but uh, the, the cards in his hand he can't play. They're locked away. Locked away. I'm not sure why the experiment like from a flavor perspective why the, the experiment prevents him from maybe that's the control group he can't touch them no i don't think that's it no they are so busy being in the lab you know ah. it's like we have to get those experiments done yeah yeah and, yeah and then if somebody comes oh i found something in my drawer and then they're like dude it's it's not it's relevant like it's not an experiment it's not an experiment it's not exciting and new talking of exciting and new though here is golgar oh, the golgari queen vraska now and it looks like she's immediately going to go downstairs. Get rid of this d dismissive Pyromancer here. So the Pyromancer ends up being the one dismissed himself. Like right on your wedding day, Simon. How ironic. Something, something, spoons. I never learned all of the, le the words of that song. Here's Runaway Steamkin. And San Juan now going to play another one off the top of his library. Wow. Chain... So the Com chain is... Uh, yeah. The combo has been assembled. And a mountain off the top, too. And a shock. Come on. One more. Get it done. Sanquan. The treasure is kind of cool as well, right? Because yeah. if you have a two... Oh! He's added all three! Three to turn! 
Can you believe it, ladies and gentlemen? Just running it back. Look at that. Triple Steamkin. That's pretty ridiculous. That is insane. And I think Lino had the option to, uh, to destroy the experimental frenzy. <laughs> He's just like, that's ah, fine, whatever. He was... What's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can happen, Simon? Looks like Burgold may respect the experiment right now. Yep, we're going to see Seeker's Squire probably destroy that experimental frenzy, you would think. Oh, sorry. That's not how that card works. Sacrifice a permanent, draw a card. Not, not destroy another permanent. That would be pretty good, though. Of course, uh, Golgari Queen, uh, Vraska the Golgari Queen, unable to destroy the experimental frenzy uh, with her minus ability. So couldn't have done that last last. Uh, no, uh, what I meant was Lino could have um, cast Assassin's, Tro Assassin's Trophy instead. What's the flavor there? What is an assassin doing? Going and assassinating the head scientist that's doing all the experiments? Or the whole lab? Or the whole lab? But that's not, that's not the job for an assassin. That's the job for a saboteur, surely. Seeker Squire coming part down again. Here's a memorial to folly. All I'm saying, we've, we've come a long way from Morph in Onslaught, where the animals and monsters were just hiding in, I don't know what. In, yeah, yeah, in the ether. No, no, it wasn't even ether. It was like some spider-like thing. All right, nerd. That's the, that's the uh, set logo. The set oh, icon the, the weird spider thing. Yeah. yeah. And I, look, I, I'm sorry I lashed out. I'm just speaking from ignorance. I don't know. I don't know as much oh. about that. Okay. We're, so we're, here, we're here to learn. We're, that's, oh, Simon, that's so true. That's so true. Here's an Assassin's Trophy now for Burgold. And Sunquire already has gotten more than enough value off of that Experimental Frenzy. He drew him four cards, effectively. And now it's getting him a fifth one with this mountain. Yep. So Ass Assassinated that Frenzy. All the matter in the world, as we see Assassin's uh, Trophy. I mean, what's the trophy takes? I guess get the, the Assassin can bring home like a Bunsen burner or something. Mm -hmm. Like a light bulb? Yeah, a beaker of some kind. I'm, I'm trying to say, okay, so I can use my hand again. <laughs> yeah, well, me, oh, this thing. Let me cast all these spells. Let, let me go back to this, uh, this PhD that I was working on previously to the experiment and, and actually, uh, you know, play it by the book. Well, Lino is getting kind of crushed here. Yeah. I, can, I can see a, a, a few red spells from Antran leading to a, to a victory in, in two turns without any opposition. What have we got? Lightning Strike, Bane Fire in hand. I think a Siege Gang Commander might be hanging out the back of the hand as well there. Didn't get a good look at that one. Let's see what the next play is here. Lightning Strike. Lightning Strike, the Vraska, maybe Bane Fire, the 2-2. The two -two. We might do it the other way around, Simon. Yeah, love it. Might just do it the other way around here for the or sake of mana inefficiency. Or just attack the, the Vraska, that also maybe. Works. That also works. Oh no, we're making more mana. Okay. Gotta get that value. So, now a lava coil to exile the the seeker squire there. Dismissed from service. And now we could see an attack with Vraska the Golgari Queen, dethroning the monarch of the empire of the uh, of the Golgari swarm here. Treasure map to play now for Sun Qua. Big attacks. All of them going at Vraska. Surely not. No, no, no. Some of them going upstairs. Some of them removing Vraska from her lofty throne. And, oh, the party don't stop, Simon. Another experimental frenzy. They've got funding again. The dean of the university says this research must continue. This is pretty impressive. Well, the thing is here, Burgold is just in a much worse position than he was when the original frenzy was out because he, he, <laughs> he's like, all right, buddy. This experiment, this experiment has gone on too long. Let's shut this down. And then Sun Quan looked, looked at his full hand and the extra mountain. He goes, "All right, okay." No, this was this was just an utter an utter beating. And I think if Lino if Lino destroys the first frenzy, it's it's a lot more fair. It might still end up uh, not working out for him, but that that first exper experimental frenzy turn. Uh, with the triple steam king was just ridiculous. The march of progress continues, Simon. Science cannot be halted. I think Saquon missed the trigger from the experimental frenzy on all of his steam kin. Is it is it also triggering for, for enchantments? I think it's just red spells. Yeah, just red spells. So unfortunate there. 
That's the way that uh, I always I always give crumbled. the players the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. Mostly. Mostly. Yep, that's well, a good habit to get into. So Burgol, nice full grip for him, but what can he do in the face of this ridiculous engine that we've seen Sankma put together here? One of the things I like about this big red deck as well is that the power level of the cards are just so much higher. Speaking of high power level, however, here is uh, Vraska 2.0 getting rid of the Experimental Frenzy here, creating a treasure token as well. So Burgold making sure that that second round of experimentation doesn't get quite as much value as the first. I don't think it matters, honestly. Damage has been done. The research has been filed. Look at how many cards uh, th these, uh, these friends have generated. Yeah. And he's a, he's a massive Banefire. So Banefire for 100,000 here. Seven. Very close. Go to eight. Yep. And pack him up here as an attack with the Steamkin would actually get it done. So San Juan not even needing those extra triggers, he says. Just uh, Burgold having to take it on the chin there. And we go straight to game two now with the magic of video editing, ladies and gentlemen, for your viewing pleasure. Skip through that shuffling, skip through that mulliganing. And let's see if San Juan can run it right back. So... You come to this tournament with the Tier 1 deck mm -hmm. on the right-hand side, or you come to this tournament with a Tier 2 Plus deck mm -hmm. that beats the Tier 1 deck. It's also fine. I mean, the thing is, I don't, I don't think... You're not necessarily far from the truth there, but I think it's important to observe a, a little bit of a nuance here in the fact that Sunquan is playing an established strategy, like a twist on an established mm -hmm. strategy. It's not, this isn't something out of the blue. You know, this isn't... It's not, unte it's not untried, not yes, untested. Yes, exactly. It's not something that, that has just, you know, it, it, we're not playing all's off mid-range here, you know. This is a deck that has a pedigree, at least, as we see Duress get rid of that Bane Fire. And so as a result, you know, we know that Experimental Frenzy is a good card. We know that Runaway Steamkin is a good card. I really like this take on the archetype, however, mm -hmm. because it's very effective to be able to dump your hand out with an Experimental Frenzy, but when you're casting 1-2s and 2-1s and, and, and whatever else, sometimes they just don't get the job done. Here, we're casting Siege Gang Commanders. Yep, and, and I, I was simplifying a bit, but the thing is, if you, if you make such a bold choice and you don't beat the Tier 1 deck, then you're not giving yourself a, a good shot at winning, winning any kind of tournament. But here, having that combination of, um, let's say, surprise value and power level, and maybe the, the, a good reason for why this deck is well positioned in the meta game. Then, then we're talking. Looks like look like it's uh, time to feed the dogs here as Ravenous Chupacabra comes down and has a nice big bowl of kibble in the form of Runaway Steamkin, but a second one as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely crucial woodland cemetery for Bogold, mm. who was uh, sitting there with three mu three swamps. So, Burgold. Got a fine finality in his hand, in addition to what looks like a Vraska there. Yep. Uh, he has Big a bunch Vraska. of Planeswalkers in hand. And it's so weird that this Gorgari deck is one of the most consistent decks in Standard. And Lino's hand just somehow isn't doing anything. He's, he's looking at this these uncastable Planeswalkers that might be a Jade Light Ranger in his hand. Uh, his Chupacabra is, would actually be better in the graveyard so yep. that he could recur it. Yep. Yep, he's got three unplayable cards in hand and then find finality. And we're going with a shock upstairs here. San Juan sending a very, very strong message. Goes down to the post office, buys the premium envelopes. He's played for express postage, Simon. And Burgold receives the two damage just like that. The, the kind of letter you have to sign when you receive it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it, 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 was, it was tracked and signed. First class Royal Mail. And then you get an email. Package <laughs> your, package just, your, pack, your package is delivered. I hope you enjoyed having your face burnt out. Here's Dismissive Pyromancer now for San Juan. He's stuck on Lansby. He's not stuck on Manor. I'll tell you that. Oh, Crossy comes for six. Look at this. Burgot has his life total halved with no playable cards in his hand. Let's see if he can find something. It's a swamp. So he still can't cast anything here. I mean, he can cast that fine finality for nothing. Oh... Savage beats here for Burgold. Looks like he's going to lose this one on the on the trot here. In straight sets, Sun Kwa is getting it done in no uncertain terms. There's that fourth land. And we're going to see a lava coil to remove the only blocker for Burgold. He's going to have to pack him up. He's got absolutely stone cold nothing yep. here. Uh, really punished with those uh, eight black sources. 
not being able to cast your spells. Yeah, Vivian Reed or, or, or Jade Light Ranger and Burgold has to pack him up. That is that. A straight sets victory for Antoine saint Coin. Simon, I do hope we get to see more of this big red deck. I mean, Experimental Frenzy is sure to see some play throughout the weekend alongside best uh, the friend in arms, the, the, the chief, uh, chief, the head scientist, Runaway Steamkin. But uh, this is a bit of a different feather. I like it. Mm -hmm. Me too. Okay. One away scheme Steamkin is not the head scientist. Though. No? No, it's it's an experiment, clearly. Oh, sure. It's it's one of the ongoing results they're testing with. There you go. Simon Simon Gertzen, level four flavor judge, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, however, we do have to take a break. After these ads, we will be back, of course, with more live magic. Tim and Moraine will be with you. So stick around, my friends. We will see you back here at GP Lil right after this.